For as long as I can remember, I've had strange experiences. Experiences that turn me into a believer of the paranormal. Disembodied voices, misplaced footsteps, shadows in the peripheral of my vision. I always chalk them up to the paranormal or my eyes playing tricks on me. Yet I have never been able to explain the cause for a reoccurring nightmare I have had since I was a child. There could be a reasonable explanation for it. A nightmare disorder, stress, anxiety, depression, the list goes on. A reoccurring dream is self-explanatory, a nightmare that persists for a length of time. My reoccurring nightmare has had the same characteristics since I could remember. I'm in my room, either lying down or standing up, cold, someone watching me. I brought this nightmare up to my mother. It was an offhand comment in our conversation. She reminded me of an experience I had as a child that I had forgot. One night when I was seven, my older sister babysat me. Whether my parents were on a date or working, my mom couldn't remember. Late on a fall night, I sat with my sister in the living room, her doing homework, me watching TV. Some of the details get fuzzy, but I remember going to the kitchen. The kitchen in my childhood home was huge. A tall cathedral ceiling with skylights and a glass door that led to the backyard. The kitchen outlined by several windows. Our porch to bathe in the warm light of the porch light. The light illuminated up to a foot away from the porch. To this day, I can't recall if it was motion activated like our front porch light. A feeling of dread told me to stop at the glass back door. I listened, and I stepped closer. Though I couldn't see much, I could see the fence that framed our backyard. Got our dog outside. He looked agitated. He broke into loud barks and yanked at the metal leash around his neck. When I followed the direction of his barks, I saw a hulking figure outlined by the fence behind them. The figure faced toward the back door, faced toward me. My eyes darted to my dog. He was yanking against the chain still, his body rigid and ready for attack. The figure took one step toward the back door. The crunch of a broken stick intertwined in my dog's barks. My frozen body broke into motion and a scream erupted from my throat. My scream halted when I felt my sister at my side. She grasped me in increasing panic. She saw the same figure and recoiled in fear. She told me to hide in a fearful stammer. The next thing I remember, my uncle searched the backyard. My disgruntled parents followed up his search. Both found nothing. Our parents doubted what we saw. The next day, out of my desire to prove them wrong, I searched the spot where I thought I saw the figure. There was a pile of broken sticks. That was enough to convince child me that I was right. I never brought it up to anyone, though. My desire to prove them wrong. Suddenly gone. I left the broken sticks. My sister and I never talked about it. We never talked about it after then or now. I can reason that I saw a figure that night. I can say it was someone who was in the backyard. I could say that maybe I made it up. That I saw things. Yet what bothers me to this day is, how does this figure keep appearing in my sleep? How did this experience ingrain itself so deeply into my fears? In my nightmares, this figure is always present. Always the same, towering, wearing disheveled clothes. One side of their body looks deformed, even under layers of clothes. Watch, stalked, and turn cold in a blue world. Even in my dreams where I can't see them, I know they are there. Their unseeable eyes carry the same smothering leer from nightmare to nightmare. Not the way an animal watches its prey but in the way that gargoyles watch for evil spirits from atop their cathedrals. Gargoyles are said to ward off evil spirits, but also represent evil spirits. Just as you protect your cathedrals with stone devotion, you have become the fear that watches from the darkness outside my window. My window. And every window.